So. Hey, Sam. Okay, how much do you need? Okay, we'll get it to you. All right, thank you. Bye-bye. Hi, guys. I'm live, and I need to get my son some money so he can get gas. So let me do that while I'm here and you're joining. So, yeah, watching my family business at work. Glad you're with me. I'm going to pull the TikTok guys on here in just a second as well. Oh, shoot. Now. No, no, no. I love how thorough my bank is on their security and I hate it as well, all at the same time because it, it's a real pain in the butt. So how are you guys doing today? Another day of excitement in uh, Trump's America. Always exciting things going on. Um, I wanna talk a little bit about evangelical response and what it should be right now. Um, I have a lot of you saying, how do we um, be nice to, to people who have been big Trump supporters? And yeah, I think that's true. I think we should be. But I also think there needs to be some repentance. Sorry, I'm putting some money in my son's account so that he can get gas in his car. He has to drive down to Reedley every day and back. So if you're with me, let me know where you're joining from. Okay, there, I think I have that done now. Um, sorry, trying to close down some things on my computer as well. I, I was very ill-prepared to go up live. So glad you're with me. Let me know where you're joining from. I see some of the folks on Facebook joining. So yeah, let me know where you're joining from. And let me get my TikTok guys up here. I just had them up and then lost them in the midst of all this. And we'll have it all together in just a minute. Okay, come on, TikTok, come on, come on, come on. I had a big day on TikTok. Uh, a couple of posts went very fairly viral today. Um, and so, yeah, oh, is that right in front of the camera there a little bit? Let me move it over. Hi, TikTok. Sorry, guys, I got, I got bumped off there for a second. Let me know where you're joining from. And glad to see you today as we catch up on a Monday in my week that happened segment. Um, yeah, one of the things <laughs> I played a video that I got from a friend of mine on TikTok that um, was a Louisville, Kentucky pastor saying that an angel told him Trump would win a second term and that um, it wasn't over yet. Trump is, you know, they're still, it's still coming. And this was on Sunday. And then there's a guy named Eric Metaxas. I, for you guys joining on TikTok, let me know where you're joining from. You guys on, in my uh, private nonpartisan evangelical Facebook group, let me know where you guys are joining from as well. Um, and who's on, love to see you guys and see your comments. Um, it's a guy named Eric Metaxas, and I hate to even give him publicity, but he tweeted today that the blood is not on the hands of followers of Trump today, but on, the, on those that stole the election. And I just want to talk a little bit about that. Because... One thing I would say to Eric Metaxas, if I could talk to him today and other evangelical leaders and some I'm thinking about talking to personally is like, how tone deaf, how tone deaf do you have to be to be this Louisville, Kentucky pastor yesterday calling curses from heaven on everybody who stole the election? Hi, Cindy and Ron. Good to see you guys today. You guys on TikTok, let me know where you're joining from. How, 
how absolutely tone deaf do you have to be? Five people are dead. Somebody told me, I, I haven't had a chance to look at the news extensively from today, but somebody said there's been a suicide of a, of a Washington police officer as well. And so how absolutely tone deaf do you need to be to not at least say, wow, I'm so sorry this thing got so ugly. <laughs> Kristen says he better place a curse on Trump too, considering he incited this. And the church needs to start to think, how did we get to this place where we still have our leaders still declaring that Trump won the election? So I want to talk about that today. And I also want to talk about a video that I TikToked today. And I put it also on Facebook, if you haven't had a chance to look at it on Instagram, of a young woman saying, that's it, I'm done with Christianity. And, and I just, I, so I, do, I stitched it, which means you take a part of one video and then put your own video on the end of it and just, just said, God affirms you. God affirms you. He's, he's not angry with this generation. <laughs> Somebody says, I mean this nice, but you are old pastor because you're not a pastor anymore because you know. All right, fair enough. Um, I'm still a licensed minister in the state of California. And yeah, so I consider a pastor, not necessarily being someone employed by a church, but someone willing to care for people in their spirit. And so I'll, I'll, I'll still take the title, even though I've kind of always been like, now nah, I'm, I'm probably more of an entrepreneur and a lover of people than a pastor. But it's amazing that there's a lot of people out there that need just some love. And so this, this young lady's video, I just said, listen, you don't have to be a Christian. You don't have to bear the name Christian to be a follower of Christ. And we've made Christianity into something that I think Jesus never intended it to be. Here's somebody, Alyssa on TikTok says, I answer the phones for state government and people call in to say we're worthless because we're dims. Here's another says, I've been so disheartened lately. Hey, Tim Reed, good to see you on Facebook in the private nonpartisan evangelical group. Man, what are you feeling today? What are you looking at? I, I really trust your spirit. But so those are my two messages today. I, I'm struggling to wonder if I'm Christian anymore. My podcast is called The Nonpartisan Evangelical. I'm asking myself, am I even evangelical anymore? I know these are scary words for people, but, but what American Christianity has become, I don't think is what Jesus came to bring to earth. I don't think it's what Jesus modeled. And if you guys are coming in on TikTok, let me know where you're coming from. And certainly this right-wing evangelicalism isn't what Jesus came to bring to earth. There's nothing in the Bible that makes me believe Jesus would agree that you have to vote Republican to be a Christian. Hi, Utah. Hi, Oklahoma. There's nothing I see in the Bible that says God or Jesus would espouse that belief. Hi, Southern California. Hi, LA. Glad you guys are with me. Oklahoma again. If you love God and love others, you're a Christian. Many Trump Americans can't say that. Yeah, thank you for that comment. Hmm. And so an Eric Metaxas that says the blood is on the hands of those who cheated the election when the evidence is clear there's no fraud in the election. The only cases of fraud that have been proven since the election were Republicans trying to vote for Trump. Very few. Hmm. Arizona's in the house. And it's discouraging to me today that the church, even today, is not going to let this be a moment where we come to repentance. Repentance means to change your mind and change your, your direction. So I, I, I've been reading 
a lot of things in the book of Hebrews, it tells us, don't harden your heart as your fathers did in the in the time of the rebellion in the desert. So I've been been studying the idea of hardening your heart. And I was reading today in Exodus um, 8 through 14. It's the story of Pharaoh and the plagues of Egypt. And I just keep being struck by this. If you start reading that story, you know, God tells Moses at the start, Pharaoh's heart will be hardened. And then as it goes, you see the first couple of, of plagues and it says, Pharaoh hardened his heart. And then you see in the next couple of plagues, it says Pharaoh's heart was hardened. And then at the end, it says God hardened Pharaoh's heart. Hi, David Plasman. Glad you're joining me on Facebook. And I'm convinced that that idea of Pharaoh hardening his heart, Pharaoh having his heart hardened, and then God hardening Pharaoh's heart is the idea of how we move in mindset in our life and how mindset is basically our belief system, our, our foundational belief system of how we respond to the world. And if we are presented an opportunity to, to stop in our heart, to hear an opinion that differs from ours, to meet somebody that believes differently than us and to learn from them, and we say, no, thanks, and then another opportunity comes to learn and we say, no, thanks. I want to continue to hold on to my old belief system. That this idea that then God hardens your heart is like there's actually a place where your mindset becomes so ingrained and fixed, you lose your ability to learn and be flexible and grow. And the evangelical church and the fundamentalist church of America and the fundamentalist view of the Bible have taught us that being at this fixed mindset that can't be swayed or moved is a good place to be. That, that you should get to a place where you can't be swayed by false teachers. And I'm calling BS on that because we are seeing in action what happens when you get to that place where you're sure we've got it all right and everybody else is wrong. That a man who's a huckster and not really a good one or an intelligent one can raise up and use our manipulate us with our languages and say, I'm going to move the embassy to Jerusalem. I'm the chosen one. And we go, yes. And he hugs a flag and he says, evangelicals, you matter. And we say, oh, what do you need us to do for you? We will cover all of your malfeasance. And we will believe you above all else. And the church teaches that this is good. Don't be fooled is a very high value in the evangelical fundamentalist church. Not being fooled means more to us than learning and growing. And so Pharaoh hardened his heart. His heart was hardened. And then God hardened his heart. And I truly believe what we're seeing in the church today. And Eric Metax is a, a preacher calling down curses uh, because he's still convinced Trump is going to win this election. This was yesterday in a Sunday service. Yeah, yeah, Juicy says, I need to share this with my parents. Do it, please. I'll put it on YouTube if you want to show it to them. And circular arguments, says another commenter. David on the NPE Facebook group says, voter suppression, however, has some evidence of being real. Yeah, there's no doubt. Uh, Ma Bell says, I am so overwhelmed. Lucy says, thank you. We value not being fooled. We value supporting our community. We value our community being right above truth. There's a name for that. It's called a cult. Or at very least, a cult of thought or a cult of personality. And we've become that church and that we could see what happened on Wednesday. And still, 
endorse it is beyond belief. I heard today of a leader uh, in an evangelical church that took down her Instagram feed today. And the talk is it was because she had been calling for people to go to Washington on Wednesday. Last Wednesday, there was a, a flag for Jesus that was used to break into the capital of the United States. And on the route there, there was a cross erected and a gallows erected, and people were shouting, let's hang Mike Pence. Mike Pence, who is one of our Christian saviors, but because he didn't do an illegal, unconstitutional act the president asked him to do, now Christian people want to hang him. Come on, Christians, at what point do we say, holy mackerel, what have I bought into? At what point do we say, I have worshipped something not from heaven? David asked, is a hardened heart where things of lesser importance have become sacred so as to take our hearts away from that which is truly the heart of God? I think that's a, as good a definition as, as any, David. What, you know, what Hebrews is saying, don't harden your heart as, your, your, as in the rebellion as your fathers did in the desert and they died. You know, what that's referring to is the fact that God took this, this Hebrew Bedouin tribe out of Egypt and said, I'm going to give you this promised land. And he took them right to the edge of the promised land. And the whole way there, they kept showing that they had this mindset of we're slaves, we're slaves, we're victims, we're victims, we're oppressed, we're oppressed. And, and finally, God said, oh, wow, I cannot take these people into the fulfillment of my promise when they have this mindset. And I find that. And so when they got to the edge of the promised land, they send in 12 spies and two of them, the young guys come out and say, oh, my gosh, this is amazing. The land is everything God said it is. This is incredible. And then the 10 older spies say, yeah, it's wonderful. But wow, the giants are huge in the land. And the young guys say, yes, the giants are huge, but but we've been promised that we get to, to receive this promise and the hard heartedness, the, the ingrained mindset in that older generation said, nah, we, we can never be anything but oppressed and slaves. And I believe the mindset that's been pressed into evangelical Christianity for 50 years is a mindset that says, a lot because of our eschatology, it's going to get bad. We're going to be oppressed. We're going to be forced to take the mark of the beast. And so when God says, no, I have this promise, you get to love people because I'm going to pour out my spirit on all flesh. I'm going to pour out my spirit on everybody and you're going to get to be priest to all of these people. And we say, no, nah, no, thanks. We kind of liked it better when we had the rules and de could declare ourselves better than everybody else. I really like being able to tell gay people they're going to hell. So can we just keep the rules that we've always had? It's really a sad view of the world. James and John, in John chapter 27, I think, said, let's call fire down from heaven and blow these people up because they rejected you, Jesus. And Jesus said, Man, you don't get it. I have zero desire to blow those guys up, even if they reject me. <laughs> and they were like, oh, well, that's weird. We've never heard that before. Tim says, a hardened heart cannot see the humanity in its enemies even though Jesus commanded us to love our enemies. He said, if you, if you only love those who love you, how are you any better than the worst sinners of culture? All right, let me get to some of these other comments. Thank you, guys. I love your comments on Facebook from the private group. Um, the deprogramming of cult mindset doesn't make that easy. What baffled me says, I can't read that name. I'm on my small phone here. 
this, these people preach, yet they don't understand why Jesus came. And lonely says, my pastor is super homophobic and it breaks my heart. Thank you for sharing the video, everybody. And, and follow my page if you can, if you're on TikTok. I just saw the video of the pastor cursing people in the name of Jesus. I got sick to my stomach. Yeah, me too. Gabby says, what denomination do you consider yourself if you do? Yeah, that's such a tough question these days. I, I kind of don't know what I am, and I'm actually kind of okay being not, I don't know what I am. Kristen says, label has have destroyed Christ's message for us all. Yeah, maybe, maybe that's just it. I don't want to take, I, 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 you know, grew up in sort of the charismatic wing of the church. Um, I, and I still believe in the mystery of God. I still believe there's some being outside the universe that communicates to us inside of it. Somebody asked, what does the Bible really say about abortion? We can talk about that some. But I, I would not espouse any denomination right now, I don't think. <laughs> I don't think any denomination would have me. Here's somebody saying, I felt such despair. You have no idea how desperately I needed to hear this. Awesome. That makes everything worth it. Here's what I say about abortion. And, you know, the, it's a really nuanced question. It's something that would take us a long time to get into. I have a ton of videos on TikTok and YouTube about it. You can check out. But what I try to communicate to people, particularly as abortion has been used to manipulate us as voters, and many of my good Christian friends believe that saving babies by wanting to pass a law to criminalize pregnant women and their doctors is God's only purpose that he really cares about on earth and everything else is secondary, if not far, far behind. I just say the Bible does not back that up. You cannot, you cannot back that up with the Bible. You can, yes, you can say, thou shalt not murder. And you can say, John the Baptist was alive in his mother's womb. And Jeremiah and Jeremiah chapter one was told, I knew you in your mother's womb. And I can argue that scripture also says he knew you from the foundations of the earth. He knew you at creation. And if I apply the same logic that you're applying to, I think that's Luke chapter one and Jeremiah chapter one, then I can take I can take those verses that say he knew us at the foundation of the earth. Went down here, guys, on Zoom, which it does every once in a while. Let me know. Let me know, guys, on Facebook if you can still hear me. The thing is this, Jesus said, you've heard it say don't murder. But I say if you are angry at your brother and speak an ill word toward him, you are worthy of hellfire. So there's no question in my mind that calling people baby killers and single issue voting is not espoused by Jesus at all. Thanks, David. Glad you can hear me again. Now, I can make an equally powerful argument that an unwanted pregnancy hurts God's heart. And so we should be doing everything as Christians to eliminate unwanted pregnancy. We should be wanting education and access to good health care and access to contraceptives, access to child care for that mother that finds herself pregnant and her and the father of that baby. And and health so health care, providing health care for everybody should be like our number one priority. Like the best thing you can do to get rid of abortion is make sure there's access to good health care for everybody. Let's fight poverty. These are the things that eliminate abortion. We know from other countries around the world that ban abortion, that laws banning abortion don't actually stop abortion. <laughs> Sounds like socialism. Pastor Paul says, Christians, yeah, socialism is another boogeyman word that right-wing media has used to manipulate our Christian voters, isn't it? 
what the Bible actually says about life, if we really want to look at the text of scripture and see what it says, is this, Adam was a fully formed man. Ezekiel's army fully formed tendons, muscles, ligaments, and skin fully formed. And in both cases, it says they were not alive until the breath of God came in them. Yeah, that, that was the Jewish tradition. That a, that a baby did not have a soul until they took a breath. So if you want to know what the Bible actually says about abortion, the thing is, the New Testament says nothing about abortion. Jesus never once mentioned it. The Old Testament says you have a soul when you take a breath and you can be a fully formed human being with skin and everything above. But if you don't have breath, if the breath of God has not come in you, you're not a human being. So we can argue that. I don't think abortion is ever a victory. I don't think there's, I, there's very few people in America that would say we love abortion. Megan says, what verse was that? I'm sorry, what verse are you talking about? But I am pro-birth, pro-choice. Sounds fake, isn't it? Very true. Yeah, I'm not sure what, what verse. Um, if you read in Genesis, the creation of Adam, um, you'll see that Adam was not alive until the breath of God came into him. Yeah, so that's in Genesis. And then in the book of Ezekiel, if you read about Ezekiel's army, it talks about Ezekiel's army being fully formed. They all came, the skeletons came back to life. But, but Ezekiel then started crying because they weren't alive because they didn't have the breath of God in them. And it's, it is just Jewish tradition from the Talmud. And yes, somebody mentioned um, something about Exodus. Um, it, uh, it has a verse that says, if a, if a pregnant woman is attacked by a man and she miscarries, and this is an arguable scripture, by the way. I don't know that I can fully say without question this is what it says, but it does seem to say if a man attacks a pregnant woman and she miscarries, the man has to pay a fine. But if he kills the mother, he, he pays with his life. And so the verse seems to say the mother's life is more valuable than the, than the fetus. And that is Jewish tradition. So just you know, if we want to say what the Bible text actually says, now I would say where God's actual heart is, is that he has a heart for that baby in the womb. He has a heart for the mother and father of that baby and the family. And he wants everybody to consider all those things in all the situations. But I think the number one thing he would say to the church is the fact that you sold your soul to a Republican party because you've been manipulated over the issue of abortion. Is, is an abomination to God. I think single issue voting, like voting a terrible person or an incompetent person into office because they're pro-life is lazy and not from God. Sorry, did I say that out loud? Jeez, I'm going to get myself in trouble. God is not a single issue God. In fact, by far, by far, the issue that God judges communities and countries on in the Bible is how they treated the poor, the foreigner, and the outcast, how they treated the marginalized people. Thanks, Heather Reed, for the amen there. Thank you so much for saying this. This is one of my TikTok family there. So yeah, so I'm very, and so that mindset that of single issue voting is what has led us here to support Trump. It's what has led our prophets to be prophesying as they are. And, and a God help me, a man like Eric Metaxas to today be saying, no, there's not blood on our hands for what happened over the weekend, the five people dead. In fact, I'm not even going to talk about the five people dead. I'm just going to say the election was stolen and the blood's on their hand. How can you be that far gone? How can you claim to be a Christian? 
leader and make that statement. <laughs> My blood pressure is coming down, says Paige. <laughs> uh, here's one. Gabby says, so do you have a Sunday live stream where I could watch your service? I do, actually. You give me a chance to make a commercial. Yes. If you go to my website, it's the Nonpartisan Evangelical Podcast. I'm planning to rebrand that, by the way. We're going to be bringing some other names out here shortly. Um, but if you go to my website, Nonpartisan Evangelical Podcast, so Nonpartisan Evangelical, N-P-E podcast.com, N-P-E podcast.com. Somebody could type that in. I'd appreciate it. I'm going to have to go here in just a couple of minutes, by the way, guys, if you want to get your comments in. Um, N-P-E podcast.com. Click on the events page. I have a Bible chat on Saturday morning. My wife and I do a podcast on Saturday morning, California time. And then on Sunday morning, 10 a.m. Pacific, um, we do a Sunday gathering where we partake of the Christian tradition of communion together. And you're more than welcome to join us for that. It has a Zoom link that you can join. Um, and also, if you sign up for my newsletter on there, um, you'll get more announcements of things we do. So David says, it's not pro-life to separate children from their parents. To be generous, thank you, Kathy, for putting my uh, website in on Facebook, nppodcast.com. Um, if somebody could put it in there on TikTok as well, I'd appreciate it, npepodcast.com. Yeah, it's six o'clock right now. Yeah, there it is. Thank you for putting it in, Beige. I love you very much. Appreciate it. Yeah, I'd love for you guys to go look at the video I did in response to, um, gosh, I can't think of her name now. She's an incredible uh, young woman who does incredible TikTok content and and she just declared today or this weekend, I'm no longer Christian. I just can't be a part of this anymore. Um, and I just had to go on and tell her and, and me and, and my good friend, Jeremy, Pastor Jeremy, the pastor from Oklahoma that voted for Joe Biden. We just recorded a podcast together today, by the way, that'll be coming out this week. We both responded and we're tagged on it. Victoria. Yeah. Victoria Hammett. She's an amazing TikToker. Check her out. Um, yeah, I'm glad you found my channel through that. That's awesome. Thank you guys. Yeah, please follow my page, subscribe on YouTube. Um, all of those things help TikTok say, hey, this guy's worth something. Let's put his stuff out there. Um, can you please have the Rio Grande Valley and all your prayers? Trump will be here tomorrow. Why is Trump going to be there? I'll have to check that out. You renew my faith. Hope people listen. Thank you. But I just had to tell her like, I affirm who you are. You do not have to carry the name Christian and all that it's come to mean. Now Trump's going to be at the Rio Grande Valley celebrating the wall. Whew. I've heard that, that people are still out there saying, hey, other insurrections are coming. So yes, let's pray for our country. Pray for President-elect Biden. Pray that President Trump will come to himself. Somehow, I don't know if, he, if, if God has hardened his heart now too, or if it ever wasn't hardened. But yeah, I just had to tell Victoria, and, and so many of you have said, hey, this is speaking to me. You don't have to wear the term Christian, you certainly don't have to wear the term evangelical to be somebody that looks like Christ. Somebody told me once a while back, and it really offended me at first. They said, Jesus was not a Christian. And he did not come to bring the Christian religion to earth. Victoria Hammett, Hammett is her last name, H-A-M-M-E-T-T, -T, I think. It's fantastic. Go check her out. Yeah, Millennial Dog Mom says, was very touched by that video. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Trump is going down to plug his wall, says Heather. How many more days? How many more days until he just goes away? I should have Victoria on the podcast. That would be awesome. I'll, I, a great idea. Great idea. Love that. Let me write that down. But I want to tell any of you watching today, God does not require you to be a Republican. He does not require you to vote single issue anti-abortion voting. He absolutely does not require you to be anti-gay. 
he's okay with you providing a fantastic cake for a gay wedding and loving the, that gay couple very, very much. It does not require you to be Christian. He just says, come to me and let's work through what life looks like together. Hard heartedness is what keeps you from being in alignment with God. Going to heaven or hell, which I think is arguable what that even looks like, but it, it's not a behavior issue. It says Abraham believed God and it was credited to him as righteousness. Enoch walked with God and suddenly he wasn't on earth anymore. He was in heaven. None of those things. Thank you, Altoff, for your thank you on Facebook. None of those things were a requirement of going to heaven for those guys. In fact, in Romans, it says, if any action of Abraham made God owe him heaven, then God was in account to him. And so if me being heterosexual means I get to go to heaven, if me being anti-abortion means I'm in right relationship with God, then any of those actions mean I can hold God in account. But, but relationship with God is a relationship issue. And relationship with God is a relationship issue between me and you. How am I walking in relationship with you? How am I walking in relationship with my enemies? That's what determines if I'm actually a person following God, not whether I'm gay or not, not whether I say a few swear words or not. Yeah, and that video of that pastor from Lexington, Kentucky on, on my social media platforms today is an abomination to God in my estimation. The third commandment of the Ten Commandments is don't take the Lord's name in vain. And that didn't mean don't say swear words. Oh, wow, blowing me away. Said Faith. What it meant was don't say God damn you. And it wasn't don't say God damn you because damn is a dirty word. It was don't call curses from God onto people. You don't get to use God's name to put curses on people. And that's exactly what that pastor in Lexington, Kentucky is doing because his guy didn't win an election. He's calling curses down on people's heads and saying, I want you to have a bad life and be in poverty and get disease and have a bad year. That's horrifying. And it's absolutely a violation of God's command that we love our enemies. And he said, if you don't love your enemies, you're no better than the worst sinner, the, the person you would consider to be the worst sinner, which was the tax collectors in there. They were traitors and cheats and swindlers and swindlers of widows. The tax collectors were considered the worst people on earth. And, he, and Jesus said to the religious people, if you don't love your enemies, you're worse than that guy. It doesn't even that guy love his children. So yeah. All right. I'm getting all fired up and preaching a sermon and I better stop. Love that you guys joined me today. We'll be watching Trump at the wall. Let's pray that we survive the next eight or nine days and get out of this thing. I hear people calling for unity. I hear people calling, let's move forward. And, and I'm saying, no, no, let's call for repentance. Let's call, repentance doesn't mean saying you're sorry, by the way. Repentance means change your mind and change your direction. Yes, somebody says, bring a prayer. So let me pray this over you. I pray a blessing of the shalom of heaven. And I pray a conviction to fall on the evangelical church of America and the whole of the Christian church that has been under the influence of this right-wing mentality. And yes, I pray for our president today that he would see the error of his ways, that he would come to know you in a special way. And I pray for our president that is incoming. I pray for Mike Pence, who I have spoken very, I haven't spoken ill of. I think I've called out the truth of his hypocrisy. And I pray for his protection today as Trump followers are now declaring him to be an enemy and chanted for him to be hanged. I pray for so many Christians to see what happened this week and let our heart 
be broken and scales fall from our eyes and let us repent of what we've been a part of. And don't let us try to move past the pain of this, God, because pain is what causes us to reckon with ourselves. And I pray repentance will come to the church. To those who say, I can no longer be part of this church or have been chased away by it. I pray for peace to come. And I tell you that if you've left your church, it's okay. God is not mad at you. He affirms who you are. But please let me encourage you to not let bad representatives of God on earth change you, chase you away from pursuing God and chase you away from pursuing communities of faith. They're out there and they're good. So I bless you guys and love you. See you all. We'll see you again soon. Please follow me on TikTok, Facebook. Share with others, okay? Not because I want to be famous, although my ego definitely gets stroked every once in a while, but because I want the message to go far and wide. Check out the website, nppodcast.com. Hi, Jen. Hi, David. Thank you, David and Sherry. You guys are awesome. Bless you guys. All right. Bye-bye.